Hey folks, how's it going? It's Mr. Murray, and this is a little video on the volume and surface area of cones and spheres. So in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about these two awesome um, 3D geometric shapes, and I'm going to be introducing you to how we find the volume and the surface area of each. And you might be wondering, why did Mr. Moray choose to put these two together? They're usually right in separate sections of the book. But as you'll see, there are going to be some really cool overlaps that will make it actually interesting to have these two together today. So I'm going to start by taking a look at this little video here. And in this video, what we have, let's take a look. So we have a cylinder, or rather a uh, cone, and we have a cylinder. So watch what happens. We're going to pour a cone in, uh, into the cone, water into that cone. We're going to fill the cylinder. Now, how many times are we going to need to fill up that cone before we get that whole cylinder filled to the brim? So that's two times. And that is three times. Okay. Very interesting. But how could we use this to find the volume of a cone? How could we use it to find the volume of the cone? Well, how many times did we have to fill up the cone and pour it into the cylinder until the cylinder was full? Three times. So that means the volume of a cone is equal to a third of the volume of a cylinder. In other words, one third times pi r squared times the height. Okay, so we now have our formula established here, but it gets better because cones also follow Cavalieri's principle. And remember that Cavalieri's principle says that if two solids have the same height and the same cross-sectional area at every level, which means if I throw any plane and cut right through that shape, the areas are always the same at, in each of the shapes, as you see in the picture, then those solids are gonna have the same volume. And so what that means is that oblique cones are going to have the exact same volume as regular cones. Hey folks, how's it going? It's Mr. Murray coming to you with just a quick breakdown on how we can figure out the surface area of a cone. Okay, and so this is a little experiment and you guys can do this at home, but uh, I thought I'd use my iPhone on this one so that I could give you a little bit more hands-on. All right, so for this, what we're gonna need is a few things. We're gonna need ourselves a cone and uh, I made this cone here, as you can see, out of you know regular tape uh, I just took essentially a piece of paper and I folded it around to make a cone and then I cut the bottom uh, to make the bottom as flat as I could. Obviously, as you can see here, it's not perfect, but it's as good as I can get. Okay, I also tried to salvage myself a little circle of paper. I created the circle of paper and the circle of paper here represents the base of the cone. So. The measurements, remember, they're not supposed to be perfect. The idea is to give you like a conceptual understanding of how we would put together the surface area of a cone, as you're going to see here. Okay, other materials you're going to need, I'm going to use a ruler to help make sure my measurements are nice and accurate. This one's a little bit chipped, as you can see, but, um, you know, given the length, it's not going to really make a big difference. All right, I got a pencil to do all my work, right, to make marks. Then I just have a piece of paper. This one's just kind of like a little grocery list uh, so that I can keep track of, you know, all the things that I've done so far. Okay, so here we go. So essentially the strategy is that we're going to do what I call like a proof by dissection. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually take this cone, we're going to cut it into pieces, and we're going to put the surface area together piece by piece. Now for a cone, right, we don't really care what's inside. That's the volume. We only care about if we're looking straight on at the cone, right, what can I see? 
What's on the outside of that cone? So basically, there's two pieces here. Okay, the first piece is the base. Now, for a given circle, for a given cone, I should say, well, we know that the base is generally going to be circular, right? Whereas a pyramid, it would not be. And uh, right, given any circle, you're going to have yourself, right, a center and a radius. Now, we already know what the area of this is, right? So, so far, we have the base. And the area of the base is always pi times the, that radius squared. We know that already about circles. So we have the base taken care of. We're gonna come back to that later. Now we're gonna bring in the lateral area, right? The sides piece of it. So one thing we do know is we have this measurement here. Now I'm gonna flatten this cone just to make it easier to write. But one thing we know, and this actually goes back to pyramids, is that we have the slant height of the cone. But here's the thing. What's the area of this particular piece? That's what we need to now find out. So to do that, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna deconstruct the cone. Alrighty folks, so I've gone ahead and I've broken down the lateral piece and um, what you should see here is that this is a circle segment. Now I have had to go ahead and move my running list out of the way just so that I could make room for it, but I still have that there. So you can see that this is a circular segment. No matter how you look at it, it doesn't matter, the area is gonna be the same. But notice what is the impact of the slant height L? Well, the slant height is the radius. So here's what we can do. Now, this is gonna be a little bit more difficult, right? With the circle, we had an exact sense of the area, but this is not quite the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna to try to divide this, okay, into as many little triangles as I can. So what do we know about the area of these triangles? Well, we know the area of any triangle. The area of any triangle is always equal to one half the base times the height. Okay. So, well, this is a circle, right? So what we know is we actually know the height of these triangles. The height of the triangle has to be equal to that slant height. But what about the base? Yikes. Well, we do bring in our one half. And so now we have that one half. And so what? Well, it's really tough to do a lot more with this because the bases, right, these don't have any value so to say, right? We can call them base one, base two, base three, and so on. And that's probably upside down to you. So I'll relabel it. So essentially, if we want the area of these triangles, we need to take the one half times, if we want to know triangle N, it's going to be the base times that slant height. So essentially, the cone is the sum of all of the triangles, or rather, the lateral part of the cone. So in other words, the lateral area, right, because this is like the base area, right? Okay, so that's equal to one half base one times its height plus one half base two times its height. So those are done. Then we add a half, right? We gotta add the third one, but its height, remember, we shouldn't really use height, right? We know 
It's the lateral that rise, right? Okay, plus a half base four times L, and so on and so on, all the way up to a half times the nth base, right? And that will call uh, up the areas of all of these triangles. And then we add them together, we get the area of the whole lateral piece. Now, as we put more and more and more triangles, right? The amount on the outside is gonna get smaller and smaller. This idea of estimating by cutting up into more and more pieces actually is a really important idea in area and will take you all the way up through calculus, believe it or not. So we start to look at this and this harkens back to the beginning of kind of course two. And in the beginning, right, we talked about things like factor. So if we look at this, what do we notice? Well, one thing I notice is that each of these expressions has a one half in it and it also has the slant height in it. And so if I factor that out, all I have left is the sum of the bases. If we think about it, the sum of the bases, let's bring back our original base. If we look at the sum of the bases, let's take a look. What do we notice? Well, when we line this cone up, the sum of the bases, whoa, has to be the same as the circumference. So what that means is the lengths of all the bases add up to that circumference. And we know what that circumference is because since the radius is R, the circumference is two pi r. So one thing I notice about this particular thing here is that I can do a little bit of a simplification. Those will cancel. And now what I've got left is pi times the radius times that lateral kind of uh, slant there. Now, to get the area of everything, I take those individual areas and I'm going to take them and I'm going to bring them together, right? Because the whole is the sum of its parts, okay? So in other words, the area of a cone, I should say the surface area of a cone, is equal to the surface area of the base plus the surface area of the lateral, the sides, okay? Service area of the base plus service area of the lateral. Service area of the base, service area of the lateral, okay? That's gonna take me to the service area of the cone. Okay, folks, so at this point, hopefully you had a chance to watch my video of me breaking down how to find the surface area of a cone by my dissection argument. At this point, what I'd like you to do is to take a stab at uh, finding the area, the surface area and the volume of the two cones on the left, and then only the volume of the cone on the right. Please um, round all answers to two decimal places. Okay, so I'll write that in there. Two decimal places. Okay, so please pause the video, find this requested information, then when you're ready, unpause, and you can see what I got. All right, this was difficult. So the first one is just a straight up application. So remember, the, the, we, we now know that the volume is equal to one third pi r squared height. We also know that the surface area is equal to pi r squared, that is to say the radius of the base plus the lateral area 
which is pi r lateral height. Okay. So given that, let's take a look at the left. So first of all, we can see the radius. So we've got the volume is equal to one third pi times 1.9 squared times 4.3. So what I'm going to do is let's open up our calculator. Okay, folks, here I am in my calculator. I'm now going to do one third times second that to get the pi times 1.9 squared times 4.3 boom okay and it's looking like 16.26 so approximately 16.26 millimeters cubed okay surface area so first we have pi times the radius square that's going to give me the base and then remember because of how we unfolded that lateral piece okay we have pi times the radius and now we need to figure out So we know that the surface area is pi times 1.9 squared plus pi times the radius times the lateral height, but we don't know what that is quite yet. So what we need to do is we need to figure that out. So we have 1.9 squared plus 4.3 squared equals L squared. Okay, so we have 1.9 squared plus 4.3 squared. I'm just going to do this quickly on my calculator. So I get 22.1 equals L squared. So that's square root 22.1. And I get L is approximately 4.701. Okay, so for R I'll plug in 1.9 and here I'll put 4.701. Okay, so we plug this on in our calculator pi times 1.9 squared plus pi times 1.9 times 4.701 and for the surface area I get approximately 39.4 millimeters squared. Alright moving to the second one on the second one First, they give us the diameter. That's the trick. So first, you got to convert to the radius of 2.95. Then it's one third pi 2.95 squared. Now we do need to get the height. So we have 2.95 squared plus height squared equals 6.5 squared. Okay. So we have, um, first I'll take 6.5 squared. I'll subtract 2.95 squared. And I get H squared equals 33.5475. And so when I take the square root of that, I get that H is approximately 5.792 okay and this is all being done on a calculator you're not expected um, to know how to do this without a calculator okay lastly we'll plug in um, to our calculator to find uh, so we got one third times pi times 2.95 squared put your 2.95 in parentheses don't forget that times 5.792 and I get 52.78 feet cubed. Okay, surface area, pi times 2.95 squared, that's the base, plus the lateral, pi times 2.95 times 
six point five. That th thank God uh, them for giving that to us. So pi times two point nine five squared plus pi times two point nine five times six point five. And I get approximately eighty seven point five eight feet squared. Okay, coming over to here now, um, what I've got is I've got 24 inches as my diameter here. So I want, look up. All right, folks. All right, folks, now I'm over on the second one. All right, folks, now I'm over here doing the volume. So I've got a 24 inch uh, diameter, give me a 12 inch radius. So what I want here, I'm only doing the volume. One third pi, 12 squared, 34. Okay, one third pi, 12 squared, 34. And I get approximately five, one, two seven point oh eight so I'm just gonna double check that so again one third one divided by three times twelve squared times pi times thirty four yep okay and don't forget that is inches cubed Okay, folks, now I'm going to do a similar thing. Uh, this experiment, however, is going to be done using a sphere. So let's take a look. Here's a sphere here, and I'm going to position my sphere on top of this little block. I have this guy do it just to maintain some stability. And let's see how many times do we need to pour this cone into the sphere to fill it up. Okay, so what just happened here? So what I saw is this guy took this cone, okay, poured it into the sphere twice, and then the sphere was full. Okay, so in other words, the cone times two is equal to the sphere. Okay, so we have one third pi r squared h, where r is the radius of the cone, plus one third pi r squared h is equal to the volume of the sphere. So think about it like this. This is too many variables. But notice the height. And this are the same. But look, if we assume that the radius here at this widest part is the same as the radius here okay of our of our sphere all right then this would be a diameter the height would be equivalent to a diameter or 2r so what we can do is we can replace it Okay, and now we can combine like this. So the two and the one third, this becomes two thirds pi r cubed plus two thirds pi r cubed. So this gets us our final volume formula and we can combine it as so. It is four thirds pi r cubed. Okay, that is our volume for a sphere. Okay, and so what's cool is that so many of these formulas are interconnected. Not only does it go back to the idea of base and height, but you can use some of these to figure out others, right? The volume, so basically the idea of base times height got us the volume of a cylinder. 
the volume of a cylinder led us to the volume of a cone, and now the volume of a cone has led us to the volume of a sphere. Okay, so now we know a little bit more about the sphere. We know that the volume of the sphere is 4 thirds pi radius cubed. But what about the surface area? So to get at the surface area, <clears throat> I'm going to take this sphere, I'm going to blast it into a million pieces. Imagine the sphere exploding out into a bunch of different chunks. Okay, I, I actually just happened to grab one of them right here. Okay, this is a little pyram a pyramidal chunk. So you could think of a sphere as essentially a bunch of pyramids put together such that the apex of the pyramids are touching all in the center. Now, of course, because they're square, right? You don't necessarily get the circular effect, but as the number of chunks becomes increasingly large, that roughness of this of the edge slowly becomes more and more circular. So we're going to use this as an approximation, right? So let's look at the the um, essentially volume of this chunk because the chunks are going to come together to make the whole. So I'm going to say volume of piece one, and because it's a pyramid. We know its volume is equal to one third times the base times the height. Okay. And so one thing we know is that because this is a sphere, we know that the radius of the sphere extends out in all directions as it similar to how it does with a circle and similar to a circle, the radius is always a fixed constant value including the fact that we could use the radius to measure the precise height of this chunk. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rewrite it, except I'm going to replace R where R is the radius. And I'm going to write that instead of H. Now I'm going to call this base. Let's call this base B1 and I'm going to call it B1 because I don't know what the base is. And there's really no more information to figure it out. But I don't know that the base of piece one is the same or different than any of the other bases. And so to be mathematically precise, I'm just going to leave it as base one. That's as precise as I can be without getting too general. Okay. So I'm going to say, so let's think about the pieces. So basically the volume is equal to one third base one times R. And then right there's going to be a second piece. So it would follow a formula like this. Okay, and then there's going to be a third piece. And there's going to be a fourth piece. And there's going to be a bunch more pieces. And eventually, we're going to get to piece n. B to the n times r. Now, as n becomes very, 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 very large, this model becomes closer and closer and closer to the actual sphere. But let's take a look and notice what do these all have in common? Well, each one of them has a one third times R in it. Okay. And if I factor that out, what I have left is just the sum of the bases. So let's go back and think about the cone because I'm in a very, very similar position. With the cone, I now had the sum of the slices. And I said, well, wait a minute. The sum of all of those bases of my slices, as n got bigger and bigger, well, it was becoming equal to the circumference and I use that to you to find a formula. Well, if you think about the bases, right? The base is this piece here, this bottom. And if I add up all the bases, what I get is only the piece that faces out. In other words, this is the surface area. 
this is what I'm looking for. And so what I know is that because this whole thing is the volume, this is then equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. So let's see where we can go from here. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 because when I do that, it will cancel the 1 third and it will cancel that 3. So I'm going to call surface area SA. So radius times surface area equals 4 pi r cubed. And assuming the radius can't be 0 because that would make sense, I can divide by r. And dividing by r gets me the surface area of 4 pi r squared. All right, folks, now for a little bit of volume and surface area practice. So here we go. The figure represents a spherical helium filled balloon. The torus attraction allows up to 28 passengers at a time to ride in a gondola suspended underneath the balloon as it cruises at an altitude of 500 feet. How much helium to the nearest 100 gallons does the balloon hold? So if you're thinking about how much the balloon holds, what you immediately need to think of is volume. So notice how we first find the radius of the balloon. So the trick here is sometimes I'm going to throw you diameter and sometimes I'm going to throw you radius. That's one of the tricks with, with spheres. So just be really, really careful here, okay? Be really, really super duper careful, okay? Now let's find the volume. So if the radius is 36, we plug it into the formula. So we get 4 thirds pi 36 cubed. Now we do need to round to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to do 4 thirds times pi times 36. And remember, the, the, to do cubed, it's the button above the division symbol. So what I get is I get approximately 195,432.1958. Okay. And so I'm just going to skip to multiplying by 1 over 0 0.1337 and you can imagine that you're going to get a lot of stuff so let's take a look we take that we divide it by 0 0.1337 and wow if i'm not mistaken because cubing really makes things very, very large. One, four, six, one, seven, nearest hundred gallons. That many. So just make sure to round that. Because it's originally 721, so we round it to the nearest hundred gallons. All right, guys, you give this a try. So remember. We have the volume of a sphere equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. We have the surface area equals 4 pi r squared. So please take a moment and take a look at this. So a spherical water tank has a diameter of 27 meters. How much water can the tank hold to the nearest liter? So we're going to find the tank in cubic meters. We're going to convert to liters, given the conversion factor. And then what we're going to do is we're going to figure out, based on square meters, how much would it cost to print a banner to cover the entire water tank. So please pause the video, try to solve these, then when you're ready, unpause, and you can see what I got. All right. So, 27 meters. So, volume, ready? 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. So, on my calculator, 4 thirds times pi times, open parentheses, 27 cubed. And what I get 
is approximately eight two four four seven point nine five seven six meters cubed now I need to convert to liters so there's a thousand liters and one cubic meter a thousand liters so if I have this many cubic meters then I need to multiply that by a thousand because there's a thousand liters and one cubic meter right so I've got times one meter cubed per 1,000 liters right unit conversion so I get eight two four four seven nine five seven point six so it would be nine five eight liters now how about this one printing costs 325 per square meter so let's take a look we've got four pi times 27 squared let's do that so four times pi times 27 squared we're looking at 9160.88 meters squared and it costs 325 per square meter so we're going to take 9160.88 we're going to multiply it by three dollars and twenty five cents and I'm going to round to two decimal places because it's money twenty nine thousand seven seventy two and my calculator actually gave me eighty six cents even all right folks hopefully this helped give you a real brief introduction to spheres and cones please take a look at today's activities around those so we can close out the year on a positive note thanks for watching have a wonderful day and don't forget to love math